Welcome to part two of my video series on the Stages Smart Bike, the SB20. In part one, I covered the unboxing, the building, and the rider fit of the bike for me. In this video, we'll cover the gearing options and the virtual setups that you can configure. Now, one thing of note, the bike is very new, and the application and the firmware that you'll be seeing today is only about a week old, so some things may change in the very near future. So straight into the details, there are two ways you can configure the gearing on the Stages Bike SB20. You can use customized gearing, which replicates your outdoor bike, such as Shimano, Campagnolo, or you can customize the buttons, or you can use Dream Drive, which is something Stages have been talking about since the bike's announcement that other manufacturers haven't done with virtual gearing. Now, what better way to go through everything than a hands-on? So let's jump down to the Llama Lab and see what it's all about. Okay, one of my favorite places to be here in the Llama Lab. Now the configuration today is at plus FEC to Zwift, which is loading right here, and Bluetooth through to the application. The reason for that is that this early in the game for the updates from stages for the bike, there's only one Bluetooth connection, which means that's taken up by my connection here, which is to the stages link app. Stages tell me, and everyone else, very soon there'll be dual Bluetooth links, so you can use the Stages link to do the configuration and check out what's going on on screen for gearing, and also connect to other Bluetooth systems, such as Apple TV, iOS on uh, iPhones, iPads, Androids, you name it. Anything via Bluetooth, you'll be able to do that with a double up. At this point in time, not the case. Uh, just double checking that here, we've got everything set. I'll pair a heart rate as well. Here we go. We are good and we are good to roll. Okay, so get my little dude rolling and we'll run through everything. So hopefully you can see the, uh, the gear shifters and levers right here on the screen. As little baby llama has his dinner. So just mind Maxwell on the background there. Okay, so Stages Link app is opened up. Click on device manager, which allows us to connect to the bike and manage it and it goes straight into monitor mode or uh, preview mode of the gearing systems. But forget that for now, let's go to the configurations first off and look at what's going on. So we have the bike name, serial number, firmware is up to date, manage crank arms, crank length, that has to be set within this application depending on where your pedals are installed on the bike for correct power accuracy. You can do zero offsets there. But the one below that is what today is all about, virtual setups. Let's go top to bottom, we've got road bike, dream drive, and one by grav dog, which is exactly what it says, one by gravel bike. Jumping into the virtual setup for my road bike settings here, we have gradient scale factor. Now this is an interesting one. I believe the gradient scale factor is the same as trainer difficulty within Zwift. So this is gonna cause no end of debates and discussions online about what it does, and how it operates. For now, we're gonna leave that alone. I believe it'll just double whatever the trainer is sent if it's set to 200% and half it if it was set to 50% of that. Even I'm confused already this early in the game. Anyway, to the gears. Gearing setup, you've got the words custom and dream drive. Custom is what we're after for standard bike. I think it should be called standard. But the options for front chain rings, we have their predefined list. Standard chain set 5339, we have a 5236 semi-compact, 5034 compact, and for the one by fans, 34 and 32 options up the front. Now you can't customize those, they're predefined. So that is a gotcha with that. Should cover all bases there. Rear cassette, same deal. Two options for 11 speed, we have 1128, 1132, and for the 12 speed we have 1028 through to 1050, which would be very similar to what we've written on the uh, SRAM Eagle cassette, 1050 on the back. But for my standard road setup that I've got replicated here for the current config, just the standard 11 speed, 1128. Uh, button configuration, both levers come with five buttons, of which two are replicas. What I mean by that is there's some sprint shifters down below to do the, do the same as one and two buttons on here. So you really have five buttons with three functions. Yeah, my math is correct on that. You can get additional uh, plug-in buttons for these handlebars soon, which will give you ability to do climbing shifters and out the front for uh, TT bikes. But for now, you have five buttons, three functions. You can see that there on the screen. So one, two, three, and one and two, which are both below. Scrolling down for those, for the configuration. So Shimano, they're all predefined. So you can see here, I can't set what left one, left two, left three do, or right one or right two do up and down in the back, up and down in the front. And for the auxiliary shifters, if we had those, they're all predefined too. 
Campagnolo. Simply switches the buttons one and two around, I think. That's all it really does. It's kind of strange calling it Shimano. Shimano changes are always on the out. Um, they're on the inside for this, so the buttons are on the inside with the thumbs for both. So whether you call it Shimano, Campagnolo, what's it really matter? It's Stages Bike. Or you can go Custom, which allows you to configure every button in any way you want. You can see there now we've got some drop down lists. So four options for each button, uh, front gear harder or easier and rear gear harder or easier. And they're also customizable for the auxiliary button. So quite a lot to play with, with four different options there. I think you can pretty much replicate anything you can do outdoors on a normal bike for those. So that's the custom setup. I'll switch that back to Shimano for now. That's what I've got mine set to. And what does that look like when you're riding the bike? Well, we'll jump back here, jump back here, and it's on screen now. So on screen here, this is the monitor mode, I think you'd call it, or head unit mode for the app. We have wattage, we have RPMs, left right balance, because this bike does have the true left right measurement on there, two independent power meters both sides. And we have the, uh, the small ring, and I press the right button, we go to big ring, back to small ring, here we go. So we've got the front gear changer up here, the virtual front gear changer, and over here, the rear gear changer. And we can slam down through those, and life becomes a little more difficult. Press and hold will also skim down and skim up, just as it would for any other electronic group set. So press and hold on this side here, all the way down, off, and all the way up. Responsiveness, not too bad with the buttons. So easy and hard. Oh, I'm still in the high gear, hang on. That's a bad idea. Let's go easy, kind of easy. Big ring, bang, straight away. So about the same response time as a normal front chain ring out in the road. Oh, here we go. I'm willing to go easy on this one because we're heading up the hills. Now the simulation you're seeing on screen there for the phone isn't correct of what the bike is doing. The bike is being sent commands by Zwift. So you, you can see here, I'm now going up a hill and the wattage has gone up. Okay, we'll get to this corner and have a rest. Alrighty, <clears throat> that's just the standard configuration for a normal road bike. Let's jump over and have a look at Dream Drive. Here's the configuration. Same deal with the gradient factor or the gradient scale factor which I don't want to be touching at the moment. 12% times two, 20, let's not do that. Gear setup, Dream Drive obviously. That's what's selected there. Now, what Dream Drive is, oh, do we have a, oh, I'll commit to this hill, I was gonna do a U-turn. So Dream Drive, hard one to explain. I think the best analogy would be, it's one single cassette, no front ring, and the rear cassette can be 50 cogs large. So I think this big, down to really small at the back. And that's configurable here. Now they do call it front and rear shifting on the app. I think that needs to change. What their terminology is with front rings, you can jump a number of gears and rear shifting with Dream Drive is a single step. I think they need to call this jump and step. So with steps, one gear change, jump, you can configure a jump, but that's not what they call it at the moment. So. I'll show you what they mean by their terminology. So at the moment, front gear shifts, five gears. So over this side, when I press the button here, it can go five, five, and five with this current configuration, or five, 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 back the other way, all at once, or up to 10 shifts at once. Wow, this is a hill, isn't it? Okay, where does it flatten out? Here we go, in the rain too. Let's make that five jumps on the technical, the front. And on the rear, we have up to 50 gears. We can go down to 10 on the rear if we want, but let's go 50 to go all the way. Button configuration, I'm gonna leave that the same. Shimano, Campagnolo or Custom. I'm not gonna confuse things here. For myself, I'm gonna leave it Shimano so I know what's up and what's down. And what that looks like within the app when I switch over in real time here to Dream Drive is exactly this. Probably the best visual representation of what Dream Drive is. So. No front chain ring, well there's one there, but it doesn't really do anything. One step, one jump at a time, pre-configured. So, step one, one, one. We can go down all the way, 50 years, or back up. One, 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 one. And as you'd expect, jump on this side, 
jumps as much as we've configured. Five, five, off, five, <laughs> five, five, press and hold will step all its way back up. There we go, to the easy way. So Dream Drive, think of it as one massive cassette, no front chain ring, where you can either jump gears or step through them very slowly. Now, final one, Grab Dog, <laughs> which I've pre-configured one by at the front there and a 12 speed on the back, 50 through to 10. So at the moment, I'm in the 34, 50, I think it is. It would be nice if they did let us know what was configured on the screen. There's just bars, a little number underneath would be kind of handy there. We'll go all the way down to the 10. All right, that gets pretty hard. And obviously this side over here does absolutely nothing. It's a one by. So we just step that back up. And we're spinning to win. But uh, I've spent a lot of time in Dream Drive, mainly because you can pick the right gear for the right cadence and the right uh, gradient. You can really fine tune the gears. It's like having an infinite cassette or very close to. <clears throat> and if you want to jump some gears, again, jump over this side. That's pretty responsive there. Now for the bonus round today, what to do rather than slam down through the gears to win a sprint. That's where the brakes come in. Now the brakes are configured uh, both independently and they're analog as such. So the harder you pull them, the faster the flywheel will stop. Now, because there's no interaction between the braking system on this smart bike and any of the software that's currently in use, what happens is it just simply turns on the resistance, which allows us to push more watts, which means in a sprint, we wanna get some, uh, an instant change or that instant uh, gear ratio to push against. It's right there and I'll show you exactly what that means in just a few moments around the corner here. So let's just say we're spinning along, spinning along. If we want to get into a sprint, we need to jump a few gears really, really quick. So slam, 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 and away we go. The sprint starts. Power up, and I'm cooked. Or alternatively, this is a bit of a bodge hack and I'm sure this will change in the future once there is integration with the brake levers to slow you down in game. But if I was to leave it in the same gear, not touch any gears, two handfuls of brakes, instant resistance, tons to push against, and I can let go and spin. Takes the complexity away of trying to change through the gears, front, back. Is it the right one? Not. It just turns on the resistance and you can push back against that. And in game, you go a lot faster. Again, not by design, Actually, it is by design. It's exactly how it's designed to work. Ideally, though, we'd have the brakes pull us up. So it's very different than in real life. Um, other than that, that about covers it. Quite complex in regards to the numbers of buttons and the numbers of configurations you can have. But that explains the standard configuration or custom and dream drive, which is that epic uh, cog at the back there. And again, to change dream drive, say down to 32 gears, with a jump of three, it's as simple as that, and bang, configuration change like that. So that's pretty cool. Being able to change that on the fly, not bad at all. If you're doing a, a flat race that then went up to, say, Bologna time trial, on Zwift, you really want to change the gearing at the end or the, for the last two kilometers. There's nothing stopping you from having it pre-configured for a hill climb bike or a time trial bike or even that gravel bike we saw before. So in game though, it'll be different with the physics and dynamics, but for gearing, it's right there. You can change it pretty damn quick. Just a pity there's no weather changing here on Zwift. Rain? What's with that? Okay, that's it for today. Part two of the stages bike configuration videos. Part three is the one I think everyone's waiting for, and that's my take on the whole ride experience of the bike. After having it for around a month, lots and lots of Ks, lots of hours, lots of, tricks and uh, playing around and grabbing the wrong gear in sprints. More importantly, the Llama Lab test and the power comparisons from this bike. Remember, it does run the Stages dual left-right power meter, but I can give you a tip. The power is actually pretty good. All right, we'll leave it there for today. As always, if you like this one, give it a thumbs up. And to support this channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out. For now, I hope the weather here on Zwift will clear because we've got some more riding to do. All right, thanks for watching.